a closer look at IOG's Lace, a fully featured light wallet powered by Mithril. And native support for Cardano finally comes to Ledger Live. It's a week of wallets. Let's take a look in the weekly report. Welcome back to Woodland Fools. Today it's time for the weekly report. We're really looking forward to digging in to see the ADA integration now on Ledger Live. But before we get into that, let's take a look at Lace, the light wallet platform that was announced by IOG. They first talked about it last year at the Cardano Summit, but we now finally have a real like working demo of what it's going to look like. So let's take a look at some of the coolest features together. The first thing that Charles pointed out is that while we're all used to this very slow and methodical release process when IOG is doing work on the Cardano protocol itself with like three major releases per year, the Lace team is utilizing the Agile software development methodology, which is a very popular methodology in the software development industry today. And the main idea with Agile is having potentially shippable blocks of code with fully complete features every few weeks instead of months or years. And so the first thing that Charles mentioned was that with Lace, you can expect a new release with new features every six to nine weeks. So even with the demo that we see right now in the wallet, we can expect a lot more changes by the time it goes live. So the first section that we see here in the wallet are the NFTs. We can see that the wallet itself here seems to have 12 different kinds of NFTs. But aside from visualizing the NFTs themselves, what Charles is talking about is that one of the things that they're going to have is an integration with the different NFT marketplaces, CNFT, JPEG Store, and whichever other ones come out are gonna start being integrated into the wallet itself so you can not only just visualize the NFTs that you have, but you could actually buy and sell NFTs directly from your wallet without having to necessarily go to the other site and link your wallet up. You can do it the other way around and visit the site from your wallet and you already have it fully integrated and ready to go. The next piece that he talked quite a bit about is the Dapp Store and the notion of finding and discovering apps in the Dapp Store. So here we can see this sort of nice universe view and they go through and they can move from one category of Dapps to the other. And there's a big thing that Charles and IOG have been talking about for a long time about the notion of how do we balance being able to have as many dApps as possible that are available and not be gatekeepers and keep people from being able to publish things, right? We don't want the Cardano marketplace to turn into another app store or another Google Play store. We have to jump through a bunch of hoops to even get listed. But at the same time, we don't want just a bunch of garbage flooding the dApp store. And then it makes it hard to sift through to find the ones that are actually high quality. And more importantly, maybe clones of projects or spoofs or spam. If anybody can list something on here, how do you know what's legitimate and what's not? And so what they're going to do is the notion of dApp certification. So anybody can list a dApp on the dApp store. There's nothing preventing you the same way how anybody can spin up a stake pool and list it on the Cardano network. But if you go through the extra effort of getting your dApp certified, and they're gonna come up with all different kinds of standards of what a certification would even mean, and there's gonna be a lot of community input too on like how this is all going to work. But if you go through this process of certification, then different dApp stores like the one that's going to be in Lace can visualize your application differently and show that yes, this is a relatively safe application that has gone through these different extra milestones to say that they've done the work and they conform to certain standards. And so we believe that they are of a higher quality than this other dApp that maybe was just listed and didn't go through any of these extra checks. And so as Charles says in this video, it's a nice way to balance both the safety that you can get from some kind of a formal review process, but paired with the openness of anybody can list this stuff and nobody can stop you from listing it if you wanna just make an application and put it onto the marketplace. And the cool thing about having this kind of DAP certification process is that aside from all the different kinds of new and creative DAPs that are going to come out, we could also use it to certify the ones that we already use every day, like all of our favorite light wallets, we all use and trust them because they're trusted members of the community. But wouldn't you feel even more secure if you knew that your preferred light wallet that you're using also went through not just a code audit, but through a formal certification process? A Cardano light wallet is a dApp like any other. So it'll be really cool to start seeing the whole ecosystem maturing here and seeing that like the most trusted and the best apps that you can choose from are the ones that have been certified and have gone through these extra checks. Another piece that he talked about is that when it comes to delegation, they're gonna add all different kinds of different security measures like the notion of proxy keys, where you can separate your spending keys on your wallet and have those be a certain set of secure keys. And then from there, have your staking keys be separate 
and have those linked back to your spending ones, but that you can do things like delegating and changing pools without necessarily having to like unlock your full wallet and have that separation there as an added layer of security. That's something that's gonna be coming in the future. Also, proxy keys will enable the ability to natively do multi-pool delegation. Currently, to do multi-pool delegation, the current workaround is to make multiple accounts on the same wallet. And what they're planning on doing with Lace Wallet as the first iteration of this is that you can have just the one account on the one wallet and using its proxy keys, then you can delegate percentage of your allocation to several different pools. And the long-term roadmap for the Lace Wallet is for it to be much more than just sending value back and forth and delegating and buying dApps. They also want to integrate Atala Prism so you can have your decentralized identity also inside of your wallet. And then that can be used moving forward with things like KYC with exchanges and all of that and having all of it living inside of the same place. They're planning on having multi-chain support so this wallet wouldn't be only for Cardano. But once IOG finishes and spins up their EVM sidechain, you'll be able to also interface with the Ethereum blockchain from this same Lace wallet. And then in terms of security, one of the biggest benefits of Lace is that it's going to utilize Mithril, which means that in terms of security, it can still be a light wallet that can be in the browser or on your phone, but it can have the same level of security as you would expect on a full node wallet like Daedalus. So a lot of really cool things coming out here. This is actually a live working demo that they showed. We're waiting to see when it's actually gonna make it onto mainnet or even to the public testnet. But as of right now, this looks really, really cool. And, and if we could just jump in with one last piece of speculation here though, I did notice this. If you look at the list of stake pools here, here we can see on this wallet, they're visualizing different stake pools to choose from. But look at this, in the cost of the stake pools, right? Here's the variable fee. But if you notice, the fixed fee is 177.55. Currently the minimum fixed fee that any pool can charge is 340 ADA. And it's a highly contested topic in terms of is that fixed fee going to change? What would it change to? What's the right approach for this? So I wonder if this is IOG subtly hinting that they are planning on making protocol parameter changes to lower the minimum fee for stake pool fees. I don't know, but this is an interesting thing to see here as part of the demo that they actually showed. If anyone knows any more detail about this, if something's coming down the line that we haven't heard, please let us know. But this was interesting to see kind of just subtly sitting here in the background as they were doing the demo. And then in a huge step towards mainstream adoption, Ledger Live now natively supports Cardano and ADA. We've been waiting for this for a really, really long time. Some of you will probably remember that there was a Catalyst proposal that was funded for Ledger Live integration. And I actually didn't realize this when the proposal first came out. I thought the work was going to be done just by the Ledger team. But taking a closer look, the Ledger team just supported sort of the backend support to make it work with the wallet, but really the execution of it and the actual work to bring the integration into Cardano was done by the Strika team, which are the same folks that brought both the Typhon wallet and Cardano scan. So huge shout out to the Strika team. Thank you for putting in the work to do this. This is really, really cool. But okay, cool. So let's go ahead and add Cardano to Ledger Live so we can view our ADA balance there. If we look at our Eternal wallet, what we're gonna use is our Woodland Pools Ledger Nano X that has about 10 ADA on it. So let's go ahead and open up Ledger Live. When Ledger Live opens up, you're gonna wanna come to Accounts and then we're gonna click on Add Account. Next, you wanna make sure that you type in your PIN and you unlock your ledger so that it's ready to go. Then let's go to Add Accounts. Okay, we're gonna come and select Cardano. Then we'll hit Continue. On the device, it's gonna ask to open the Cardano app. So let's go ahead and confirm. All right, we're synchronizing our accounts. We're gonna export the public key on the device. Confirm that. When it's synchronizing, keep an eye on your device. It may ask you to export export more than one. Export it again. Okay, cool. So we see here our existing account that has 10 ADA in it. Let's go ahead and add that account. Account added successfully. Sweet. So let's go ahead and click on that account. Cool. How easy was that? So now we can see here inside of Ledger Live, the same place that we would manage our Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other cryptocurrency, we can now also visualize our ADA from our Cardano account as well. And we can see all of our same transactions here like we added nine and one ADA. If we go to our transactions list here, we see the exact same transactions there, which is what we'd expect, right? It's another representation of the exact same balances. It looks like they haven't added multi-asset support yet. I think that's coming out in phases. And I also don't see a way to manage your delegation. So we'll provide updates as those things come out. But in the meantime, a really great start for both the convenience of being able to view all of your cryptocurrencies in one place from your same single ledger wallet. And also for mass adoption, this is the kind of thing that we need to make things easier. When people get their ledger, they can add Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever other accounts they want and Cardano and not have to use a third party wallet to visualize their ADA balance. Really, really cool stuff. Let us know what you think. And if nothing else, we'll see you next week.